Guru Dev, Guru Dev, Guru Dev, Jaya Jaya Guru Dev. Paramahansa Parivraja Kacharya Stotra Sita Shri Srimad Divine Grace Isi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sri the Prabhupada Ki Shayam Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parivraja Kacharya Stotra Sita Shri Srimad Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur Sri the Prabhupada Ki Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki All glories to the assembled devotee all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Gauranga. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Triyo Karuna Kurura <coughs> Durmarsha dur Priyasahasaha dur Gnanantyalpate Pi Visrabdham <coughs> Patim Brataram Apyata Triyo ya karuna krura Durmarsha priya sahasaha Gnananti alprate pi visrabdham Patim prataram apyata Striyo ya karuna krura Durmarsha Priya Sahasaha Gnantyal Prate Pi Vishrabdham Patim Brataram Aputa Duna Kurura Dormarsha Priya Saha Saha
Vaishnavis. Striya, women. women, he, he indeed, indeed. Akurunaha. Akurunaha, merciless, merciless. Kruraha. Kruraha, cunning, cunning. Durmarshaha. Durmarshaha, intolerant, intolerant. Priya, Sahasaha. Priya Sahasaha, for their own pleasure, they can do anything. Gnanti, they kill. Alpa arte, for a slight reason. Api, indeed. Vishrabdham, faithful. Patim, husband. Brataram, brother. Api, also, also. Uta, Uta, it is said. Translation, <coughs> women as a class are merciless and cunning. They cannot tolerate even a slight offense. For their own pleasure, they can do anything irreligious, and therefore they do not fear killing even a faithful husband or brother. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. King Pururava was greatly attached to Urvashi, yet despite his faithfulness to her, she had left him. Now, considering that the king was wasting his rarely achieved human form of life, Urvashi frankly explained the nature of a woman. Because of her nature, a woman can respond to even a slight offense from her husband by not only leaving him, but even killing him if required. So to say nothing of her husband, she can even kill her brother. That is a woman's nature. Therefore, in the material world, unless women are trained to be chaste and faithful to their husbands, there cannot be peace or prosperity in society. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutade Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vanchakalpa Turubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaura Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I first beg the blessings of the senior Vaishnavas that I can speak appropriately and our Gaudiya Vaishnav Siddhanta is given to us by our Srila Prabhupada. So we are continuing with Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 14, King Puru Rava, Enchanted by Urvashi. And we're on text 37 today. And we're hearing some very <coughs> intense verses <laughs> in the next coming days also there are some intense verses coming up that are speaking about the nature of woman and this is being spoken by a woman named Urvashi and the ninth canto is really purifying us for entering into the tenth canto which is the smiling face of Krishna Srimad Bhagavatam first canto up first canto is like Krishna's lotus feet and then up to his lotus face in the tenth canto but to really enter into the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 
one must understand the difference between lust and love, material lust and Krishna prema. One is like iron and one is like gold. And so in these pastimes that we're hearing, specifically in the ninth canto from Sita Ram to uh, Soma and now King Pururava, we're hearing very intense situations of when man and woman get together. And Srila Prabhupada said man is good and woman is good, but when they get together there can be difficulty. And we're seeing that King Pururava, he's not actually a hero here. He's not a hero in this story because we see that when Urvashi, she was cursed by Mitra and Varuna to become like a human being. So she became like a human being and she saw Pururava, who was very beautiful and handsome. So she was attracted in the bodily concept of life to Pururava. And Pururava, he was intoxicated by the beauty of Urvashi. So they did not come together to increase dharma and to increase their devotional service. Right in the beginning, King Pururava, he said, let us get together for sexual relationship. So this is the basis of their relationship, is bodily consciousness. You're a woman, I'm a man, let's enjoy each other. But what happens is that Urvashi gave him very specific requests that he had to follow so that she would be his wife. And he couldn't do that. He, and specifically, he couldn't do that because Indra wanted Urvashi back in his dancing court. And so he sent the Gandharvas to uh, foil their plans of happiness. And so Urvashi left. And King Pururava, he became like a madman. He was wandering from place to place. And he finally found her at Kurukshetra. <coughs> and we'll even see in coming purports, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur remarks that Pururava was very lusty. That was his goal in life, was to satisfy his senses. And Urvashi is giving him some insight to the nature of a woman. Now, who is Urvashi? We should go back a little bit and understand who is Urvashi? Where did she come from? Urvashi means born from the thighs of Vishnu. So where did she come from? When Nara and Narayan Rishi were engaged in severe tapasya in Sati Yuga, Lord Indra, he became very disturbed, thinking that Nara and Narayan Rishi, they're great sages, they're going to usurp my position. I need to send <coughs> Cupid along with some dancing girls to disturb their minds. And we see this happening very often in uh, the Vedas and Srimad Bhagavatam, that Indra, he's very, very envious of others who are trying to get some kind of material power. And so when sages and yogis and rishis, they're engaged in very severe austerities, sometimes the demigods will send down beautiful women to disturb their minds, to disturb their progress. So Lord Indra, he sent down Cupid with very beautiful women to disturb the mind of Nara Narayan Rishi. And sometimes before we even see that, like for instance, Vishvamitra, he, uh, Lord Indra, he sent down Ramba to disturb the mind of Vishvamitra. And Vishvamitra, he became so angry that he cursed Ramba to be a stone. <clears throat> so his anger took over him. So when Cupid and the dancing girls, the Apsaras, they came before Nara Narayan Rishi. Nara Narayan Rishi, they weren't disturbed, and yet they didn't get angry. And actually, they, they speak about this, that actually one who is lusty, they will give in to anger. This is <coughs> another side of lust. But Nara Narayan Rishi, they didn't become lusty. They didn't become angry. But instead, Nara Narayan Rishi, they manifested the most beautiful women that even enticed Cupid, that enticed the demigods. The demigods couldn't believe how beautiful these women were. And Narayan Rishi was showing them that you're trying to present beautiful women before me, but I can produce even more beautiful women than what you can, than what you can produce. 
And so Nara Narayan Rishi, they said that you can pick one of these women to take back with you to the heavenly planets. And they picked Urvashi. So Urvashi was born, you can say, from Nara Narayan Rishi. And the demigods took her back to <coughs> be in Indra's dancing arena. So this is the birth of Urvashi. And we see her here that Urvashi, she's not a pure devotee. She is a dancing girl in the court of Indra. And we even see later after this that once when Arjuna, he went to see Indra in the heavenly planets, in the heavenly, in the heavenly abode of Indra. And when Arjuna was there, Urvashi became very lusty after Arjuna. But Arjuna saw her as a mother. And so he wasn't enticed by her beauty. Instead, he respected her because she was with Indra and she was with Pururava. So he saw her as a mother, but she wanted to enjoy him. And so she became so angry that she cursed Arjuna. How dare you not be infatuated with my beauty? How dare you not enjoy with me? I curse you that you will have to become a eunuch. And so when the Pandavas are exiled for a certain amount of time that they had to be exiled, Arjuna became a eunuch and was teaching girls how to dance. So we are seeing how Urvashi, she is a woman who is not a devotee. She is under the material nature. And so Srila Prabhupada in Bhagavad Gita lecture titled uh, Chast uh, Psychology of Chastity, Srila Prabhupada <coughs> talks about these kinds of verses that we hear or in the previous in the previous purport it said one should not trust a woman or a politician. So Srila Prabhupada <coughs> speaks about these kinds of verses that we hear in Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srila Prabhupada states, so there must be good population. So to have good population, the women should be very chaste. That is the basic principle of Vedic civilization. And to keep the women chaste, it was the function of the responsible father, or in the absence of the father, the elder brother. So he must get the wom woman, the girl, married. It is compulsory. There is no compulsory for man to marry, because a man may remain brahmachari. By training, he can abstain from sex. But if wo woman is not protected very strictly, it is very difficult. It is very difficult. We are discussing Shastra. Don't think otherwise. Chanika Pandit says, Vishvasam naiva kartavyam strishu raja kuleshu cha. Don't trust women. Strishu means women. Raja kula and politicians, yes. Vishvasam naiva kartavyam strishu raja kuleshu cha. Never trust the politician and woman. Of course, when woman comes to Krishna consciousness, that position is different. We are speaking of ordinary woman. Because Krishna says in another place, place Striyo Vaisha Tata Sudra, they are considered women, Vaisha, the mercantile community in Sudra, and the worker class, they are less intelligent. Papa Yoni, when the progeny is defected, defective, then they become less intelligent. So this is the point that when we hear verses like this, <clears throat> like the one we are discussing today and the one we will discuss on Monday, then this is not talking about women who have come to Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada specifically explains here that that position is different. We are speaking of ordinary women. So we are not speaking about Krishna conscious women. But we can see that this is the nature of a materialistic woman, <clears throat> especially w when a woman is polluted, like Urvashi. She is polluted because she is not being guided in dharma. She is not being guided in righteousness. She is being taken advantage of, and she is being objectified. And this is something that we have to deal with in this 21st century, and even before then, that women have become objectified a subject becomes an object. So growing up in the United States of America, 
All of us men, we are taught to objectify women. Women are there for our pleasure, for our enjoyment. And we can see this very heavily in advertisement and billboards all over the society. You can see that women, <coughs> because they're not being taken care of by their fathers, by their brothers, they're not being guided in a spiritual society. They're not being guided by Vedic culture that they're being taken advantage of. Women and children are innocent, Srila Prabhupada says, because of lack of discrimination. Women are very soft-hearted. Women have very different natures and can be easily very taken advantage of. And uh, a powerful example of this is Edward Bernays. How many know who Edward Bernays is? Edward Bernays is the uh, nephew of Sigmund Freud and he is the father of public relations and what he, do, what he did was he took Freud and uh, Pavlov's <coughs> psychology and he used it to create public relations or propaganda and he used it, started using it in advertisements and specifically there was a um, I forget which year it was I want to say it was 1936 maybe, but there was an Easter parade in New York City. And at that time, it was not very social, uh, socially acceptable for women to smoke cigarettes. And the tobacco companies, they went to Edward Bernays, who was starting to work in public relations, trying to get his name known. And they said, what are we going to do? Women are not allowed to smoke in certain areas. It's very taboo for them to smoke. What are we going to do? We're, we're missing half the population. We could be making so much more money. What, what are we going to do? So what he did is he took women who were part of the Ivy League and in the Easter parade, he said that we're going to start a feminist movement that's going to promote women to smoke cigarettes. And so he said, I'm going to give you Lucky Strike Brands, who he was working for. He was working for all the tobacco companies. And he said, these are now freedom torches. These are professing your freedom in this, uh, in this society. So the women in the parade, they started smoking freely. And he made sure that all the newspapers, all the advertisement people, they were there to take pictures and show the rest of the world that women are now free. They're able to smoke wherever they want to. And so this is a man who took advantage of women because at that time, <clears throat> we can see that women were still in a kind of innocent a uh, stage. Now it's becoming more and more and more gross <coughs> in terms of objectification and some of the advertisements that are even out now are very pornographic in, in uh, in detail. And so we, we see that in Vedic culture, women are meant to be protected. And when women are protected by the father and the brother, when women are protected, then they take on the motherly qualities that they're supposed to bring to this world. Now, Vedic culture says that one should see every woman except the wife as mother. That's why we call women matajis in our society, except for our wife. <coughs> this is because women are by actual nature supposed to be mothers. And mothers, we get a feeling of compassion, nurturing, caring. And in Vedic culture, that's protected because that's needed for the society. That's needed for good progeny. If you don't have, if you don't have ideal mothers then you're not going to have ideal progeny. And when you don't have ideal progeny, then other women are going to be objectified. Other women are going to be taken advantage of. And then you get a social collapse. <coughs> so it's not that Vedic culture puts women down. Actually, spiritually, we're all on an equal level. But we can't ignore that woman has a different nature and man has a different nature. It has to be taken into consideration. Sometimes in today, we want everybody to be equal, but that's not possible because we have different natures. <coughs> Even men, we have different natures, mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance. And women, they have the same types of natures, passion, goodness, and ignorance. 
But we see when women are protected, then they become motherly, they become caring and compassionate. And we see this in the example of Draupadi. Draupadi was protected by her husbands. Before that, she was raised by her father. And she was protected by her husbands. And so even when her children, when her children were killed by Ashvatama, they were beheaded by Ashvatama. In Mahabharata, we know at the end of the war, Ashvatama, he goes into the camp secretly while Draupadi's children are, and the Pandava's children are sleeping and he kills them in their sleep. And Krishna himself and Arjuna, they say that Ashvatama must die by Vedic uh, rules and regulations. He must be killed. He's a, he's a transgressor. But Draupadi, being motherly, she went against even Krishna and Arjuna saying that, no, he must be spared. He's your guru's son. He's a brahmana. How can we treat a brahmana like this? They brought him bound up and she couldn't even see the sight of him being bound up because she had such motherly affection. And to even think of him being killed, she was thinking of his mother, of Ashvatama's mother. How is she going to feel? I know what it's like to have children that have been killed. And now we're going to kill her child? I can't even bear her, her pain. So we see that Draupadi, <clears throat> because she was taken care of in the Vedic culture standard, that she had motherly qualities. She had the qualities of a woman that was actually very devotional. And Sri the Prabhupada in the purports explains that this is the nature of a pure devotee. And so this is <coughs> proper Vedic culture to see mother uh, to see women except one's wife as mother and then they you will not take advantage of your mother you will respect them you will treat them properly and in turn they will create good progeny and so even in the Grihasta ashram in our ISKCON movement because of the false ego of the male there's still a tendency even though we're practicing Krishna consciousness, to treat our wife as an object rather than as a subject. And also for the woman to treat the husband as an object rather than as a subject. And so this is the nature of the Grihasta ashram that we have to be very careful even in the Grihasta ashram not to treat each other like objects, but to use the platform of Grihasta ashram to make advancement in Krishna consciousness the man and woman help each other trying to advance in Krishna consciousness rather than what we see here, Pururava and Urvashi coming together just to unite for sex, sex, sex pleasure. <clears throat> and so in this material world, we see that in the people that are living in this material world, there's so many horrible things that have happened over the years between man and woman. We don't have to go into any details. We all have been raised in this society and know what has happened. And so we have to be very careful in how we treat each other, not to treat each other like objects. <coughs> and another very powerful lesson, when Srila Prabhupada says that these types of statements are not for Krishna conscious women, but are for women who are materialistic. <clears throat> there was um, an instance when uh, Bhakti Tirtha Swami, he went to Srila Prabhupada, and he was just coming to the movement, and he was from, um, you know, very college educated, and he could, he, he could see that in this movement there was a lot of prejudices. So he went to Shri the Prabhupada and he said, Shri the Prabhupada, I see in your movement that there are a lot of uh, prejudices still here in the movement. And Shri the Prabhupada said, you are disturbed because someone is thinking that you're the body. And so you are no better than them. Actually, you are also nonsense because you're, you're disturbed because you're, they're think, you're also thinking that you're the material body. So to quote one of these or to <coughs> put it on a woman, 
A woman also could not think that she is a woman. She has to understand that she's spirit soul. And there's many other verses about men also. And this is the this is the test that we have to go through to understand that we're really not this body. That we should not be stir disturbed when we hear verses like this. Actually, the nature of, uh, of modern day is that, oh, I have to give uh, class on this type of verse, or we're reading together and we're going through these verses. Uh, just better to skip over it or just hurry through it. But no, we should actually understand through the whole context of what's being stated. Not just take one statement out of context, but we should see through the eyes of the Vaishnavacharyas. We should see through the eyes of the instructions that have been given in all the previous chapters and all the chapters that are to come. It's not that we take one statement and use that to prove our misconceptions, but we have to take it in the proper context. And so today we are observing the disappearance day of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, Srila Gopal Bhatta Goswami, and Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. And Srila Raghunath Das Goswami and Srila Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Oh, Raghunath Bhatta, sorry about that. Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, that um, <clears throat> their lives are very powerful because Srila Raghunath Das Goswami he grew up in a household where it was not favorable for his devotional service. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was the first of the Goswamis to meet Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when Lord Chaitanya first took sannyas and then went to the home of Advaita Acharya. And there he met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so Srila Raghunath Das Goswami <coughs> From a very, very young childhood, he was, he was ready to leave his materialistic family and run to the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they tried so many ways to keep him at home. Govardhan, uh, Govardhan Madhumadar and Hiranya Madhumadar, they were very wealthy. At that time, they were multi-multi-millionaires to today's standards. But they were very materialistic. Even though they were devotees, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami states that they were very materialistic in their thinking. And they wanted to keep Raghunath Das Goswami home. And so they even got him married to a wife that was as beautiful as an Apsara. And still, he was trying to run away. He was trying to run away from so much wealth. He was trying to run away from the materialistic standard of his home so that he could go and take shelter of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Raghunath Bhatt Goswami <coughs> was born in the family of Vaishnavas. And so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually instructed him to <coughs> serve his parents. He was born in a, in a Grihastha ashram. And so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not encourage him to leave his parents behind, but actually to serve his parents until they become, became of age and they left their bodies. And then Raghunath Bhatt Goswami could continue and uh, renunciate, uh, renounce everything. So we have these two examples here that the Grihastha Ashram, it can be very conducive for Krishna consciousness, whereas the materialistic household life can actually be very unfavorable for Krishna consciousness. And so we have to properly see what is favorable and unfavorable in our Krishna, conscious, Krishna consciousness. And to end with Krishna Varnam Trisa Krishnam Sango Pangasya Parshadam Yajya Sankitan Prayar Yajanti Hi Sumedasaha. So everybody who has taken shelter of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, everybody who's taken shelter of the holy name, is the most intelligent person. He used to saha. They have good brain substance. So Srila Prabhupada in the uh, further class of Bhagavad Gita, Psychology of Chastity, he goes on to talk about how anybody who's taken shelter of this movement is the most intelligent, is the most fortunate. So we're in a very fortunate position and we should try to take seriously this process of devotional service that will 
<coughs> automatically give us the realization that we are not these materialistic bodies, that we have nothing to do with this material world, that actually our consciousness should be fixed up at the lotus feet of Sri Guru and Goranga. We have the, uh, everybody has their I iPhones and smartphones today, and everybody usually is on the 4G network. So we should also be on the 4G network. Guru, Goranga, Gandharvika, and Giridhari. This is the 4G network that we have to connect to, and then our consciousness will be fixed up. So thank you for listening. If there's any questions, comments, corrections. Ananda Kirtan Prabhu. <coughs> Thank you. I had a question about Prabhupada's purport. Um, he was saying that, so he was saying that if it facilitates their sense gratification, <coughs> Prabhupada in his purport was saying that if it facilitates their sense gratification, women will even kill their husband or even their brother. So we don't really hear about that. Um, are there any? Is there anything in Bhagavatam that talks about that? In Bhagavatam? Well, an example in Srimad Bhagavatam and Ramayan is Kaike. Right? We just heard in uh, the pastimes of Sita Ram that Kaike, due to the influence of mantra, right, she was ready to send Ram to the forest because mantra wanted her son, Bharat, to become king. Ram was going to become the next king. Dasarat, the king then, was going to uh, put Ram as the, as the king. But Mantra influenced Kaike. Kaike had a benediction that <coughs> Dasarat gave to her. And so she used that benediction to exile Ram to the forest so that her son, Bharat, would become the king. And in, dos, in, in so doing, she actually killed Dasarat. Dasarat couldn't handle the separation of Lord Ram. But this was also a very special pastime because Mantra was actually influenced by the demigods. This was all Leela of Ram to go and kill Ravana. So Ravana, uh, Ram had to go to the forest, see to be captured, Ram go kill Ravana. And so this could be an example of that. Vijay Prabhu. This is not from the Bhagavatam, but this is from the Gaudiya Math about 80 years ago. This one sannyasi mm. of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He was a respected sannyasi, but then he had some difficulty. He left taking some jewels from the deities, got married, had a son, and then the, la the lady that he married, she was having an affair with another man. And the son found out about it and told the, his, his mother, I'm going to tell father, and she killed him. Mm. She killed her son. And then when the ex sannyasi found out that his wife had killed his son, he killed himself. So it's not from the Bhagavatam, but it just gives you an idea. It's Krishna. <laughs> mother Rambaru wanted to say something. <coughs> I was, I was reminded of the story of King Chitraketu, whose wives murdered uh, his son of poison because they were so envious of his primary wife. That was just one example from the book. Sure. That's all. Archita Prabhu. But again, just so we don't seem like we're bashing women, you gave an example yourself of Ashwatthama mm. murdering the sons of the Pandavas while they were sleeping. So. We're not, again, we, the, you can't appreciate this Vedic presentation if you don't at least theoretically accept that you're a spirit soul completely different from this body, whether male, female, or undecided, or whatever. We're not, we're not this body. And if you don't get that into your consciousness, then you, you, get, you get upset. Mm -hmm. It's like you gave that example about um, Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj going to Prabhupada. Jadarani, the first woman in, in ISKCON, she went to Prabhupada in the early days saying that the boys were not treating her properly. 
And Prophet didn't say, oh, I'll take care of it. He said, if you continue to think of yourself as a woman, how are you going to make any advancement? Mm -hmm. That was his response. If you think of yourself as a woman, how are you going to make any advancement? So all, it applies to all of us. Because you know, it's just a matter of time before your camp and your cage gets rattled. You may not be so upset if you know, something is said about women that doesn't seem so favorable. But someday, something will be said about black or this or that. You know, and, and you get, if you think of yourself as being black or a woman or whatever, of course you're going to get upset. But when you realize that you have nothing to do with this external body, then, it, like Prophet said, it, you're not disturbed. You don't become disturbed. You realize that you have nothing to do with that. Surah Prabhu. And in this show, it's very Krishna conscious. It shows, I think, men and women who snap, their consciousness breaks. They can't take it anymore. And they kill their spouses and their family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But even better than that show is the Yahoo News feed which if one looks at, which I think you can do as a devotee, everyone can see the news a little bit. There's at least half a dozen. The father drowned the children, the mother killed the brother, the father killed the mother. Every day, isn't it? So, there are so many examples in modern day. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Sri the Prabhupada ki.